All right, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is John and today we're going to be talking about how to grade S-log footage so that you can remove the noise that's typically associated with S-log footage and so that you can make it look not so flat, uh, not so like dull and desaturated and, and lacking contrast. All right, so to get started, here we go. We'll uh, import a clip of my friend Kyler talking uh, talking about an Alta that he rode at Unardilla. Uh, it's a video that's gonna come out pretty soon. Just a solid interview clip. Uh, so we're gonna add it to our timeline, create a sequence, and then head over to the color tab. Uh, what we're gonna do from here is click on Lumetri scopes, and this will bring up our scopes. So we can see here, I have all the scopes checked. Uh, I'm working on a 27 inch iMac, so uh, I can see everything fine, I just turn everything on. Basically these scopes just display the light and uh, how it actually looks. So a lot of times uh, a screen can be off calibration. Uh, sometimes a, a screen might display something as more contrasty or maybe like a little bit more blue or orange than it normally is. Or maybe with a higher saturation than is actually true to the footage, uh, true to the file. So looking at these scopes is going to tell us exactly what the footage is and make sure that it's displayed as well as it can be displayed across all screens. So now that we have the scopes up, we can start making some adjustments. Uh, usually I start by pulling down the shadows. So when you shoot S-log footage, the point of shooting a log format is that it will bring up the shadows and bring down the highlights. So it retains detail in the shadows and you can see a lot more in the shadows. It pulls basically all the contrast out of the shot, giving you kind of like a muddy, gross look that Everybody thinks S-Log is, and uh, a lot of people don't know how to get it back to like a normal, like good looking footage state. So what you're gonna do in post to correct this is pull down the shadows and pull down the blacks and pull up the highlights and pull down the whites. This is gonna depend on the clip you're grading, how much you're gonna do this, or if you're going to do it at all. Like I said, the point of S-Log footage is to retain detail in the highlights when there's a, when there's a vast change in exposure. If there is a really, really light portion of your clip, you're not gonna wanna boost the highlights as much because boosting these highlights is gonna mean you're gonna lose detail and there's gonna be a giant white portion on your screen. Uh, same goes with the shadows. If there's a really dark portion of your clip, you're not gonna wanna crush the blacks and drop the shadows as much as you would with a clip uh, like this one with a lot of just mid-tones in it. Otherwise, you'll end up losing detail and uh, you'll have a big black spot on your screen. So uh, what we're gonna do here first is bring down the shadows. And if you can see over on the waveforms, you can see the lower end of the color drops down. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing with the blacks and watch that color drop again. I usually like to try to get my black point between zero and 10. It's a pretty safe spot. Uh, and as long as nothing is clipping that zero line, you're not losing any detail in the shadows. So uh, next we're gonna move over to the highlights and pull those up and similar to the shadows, but in the other direction, you can see the highlights coming up. With highlights, I like to try to keep them between 90 and 100 if I can, uh, but if it starts looking kind of like it's blown out a little bit in certain spots, uh, sometimes I'll keep them between 80 and 90, which I'm probably gonna end up doing because he's got that white barn behind him and it'll be kind of distracting if it's too bright and it'll just look like it's glowing pretty much. And then bring down the shadows a little bit more because bringing up those highlights kind of brought up the shadows a little bit too. And then uh, finally for basic correction, uh, bring up the saturation. For saturation with S-Log Clips, I tend to go between about 120 to 140. Uh, 123 is looking pretty good here. Uh, this is kind of personal preference. I tend to lean slightly towards the desaturated side. Uh, that's how I prefer my footage to look, but that's kind of more of a preference thing. Next, we're gonna head over to the creative tab and we'll pull up the sharpness. Uh, another thing with S-Log footage is there's very minimal in-camera sharpening. Because your computer can do it better in post than your camera can do it, your computer's just better at processing this and you're gonna end up with a better image at the end. So I usually raise the sharpness to around 20. And then finally, we'll move on to the curve section. What I like to do with the curves is pull the black over a little bit more. Give us a more crispy image. Uh, you can see we got the black levels floating between zero and 10 again. And I like to pull up the highlights a little bit more too. And then this is where I'm kind of polishing off the clip. And here, now that I've made some more adjustments, I think I am gonna bring the highlights up between 90 and 100. Uh, once I drop the shadows a little bit more, I think it looks a little bit less washed out. We're gonna leave them there, uh, a little bit more contrast, you have an image. And then what I like to do is drop a point right in the middle of a curve. 
and then pull down the shadows from there and you can see it also brings up the highlights and gives you like a nice pretty even s curve uh drop the shadows a little bit more give us a slight s curve not too much or it starts looking too contrasty and just looks weird if you want from here you can pull out the blacks and kind of give it a more faded look but i think i'm just going to leave them uh, all the way dropped for this one and then moving on we'll talk about the hsl sliders so basically what these do is you can pick out a color in the clip and change that color we have some green in the background and for this clip i think i kind of want to give it a warmer feel so what i'm going to do is take my eyedropper and click a green spot in the clip a spot that i think is like a pretty average green this looks like a good spot and what we can do is turn on the color slash gray this is going to show us what portion and what colors of the clip we have selected so right now we're kind of at a narrow selection of colors and we're only selecting a small portion of the screen but what we can do is pull these hsl sliders around and kind of up the range of colors that we're selecting so we want to try to select as much of this green as possible uh, and basically just play with these hsl sliders it's going to depend on the clip you're using pull these around and try to just select as much green as possible without selecting any of his skin tones or any of the barn or uh anything other than basically the green so what you can do from here is make an adjustment to that color so i decided earlier on that i wanted to give it a little bit of a warmer look so what i'm going to do is on this wheel is pull it more towards the orange and red section and this is gonna warm up the grass basically give it more of like a summery vibe and that looks like a pretty good spot you don't want to push it too much or it kind of starts looking fake now we'll turn off the color gray and see how that looks afterwards i'm kind of liking the look I'm gonna maybe pull it down a little bit. I think I want a little bit overkill. That seems good right about there. Uh, and after that, I feel like his skin tones were a little bit washed out. Uh, so I'm gonna add a little bit more saturation back in. It's just a couple final touches. And then if you want, I don't usually play with these, but you can head over to the color wheels. This is basically just another curve section. The information is just displayed in a different way. Uh, I personally like to just use the curves, but if you want, you can use these too. Uh, it might be a little bit easier for some people. You can pull up the shadows or down the shadows as well as the midtones and highlights and then change the hue of the shadows, midtones, and highlights with the color wheel. So let's say you want to have more of a blue shadow and uh, maybe some orange highlights, give it a nice cinematic feel. You can do that with this and specifically adjust the shadows and the highlights. So I think for this clip, I might actually pull down the midtones a little bit. And then uh, from here, if you want, you can add a vignette. I'm not a big vignette guy, but some people might enjoy a vignette. Might fit well with the look you're going for. But from here, what I like to do is just expand my viewing area as much as I can. Get a full feel for the clip. Put it as big as you can on the screen. Make sure there's nothing really weird happening anywhere. Just kind of give the clip a final once over to see if you like the way it looks. I'm pretty stoked on this one. I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I go through grading S-Log footage. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, it would be awesome if you'd leave a like below and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.